When it comes to affordable graphics cards, uh, Intel is the first brand to give us some actual good news this year. They dropped the price of this ARC A750 GPU from about $290 to $250, and they also released a big driver update that is supposed to improve performance in a ton of games. So I thought this was a great moment to talk about this card a bit more, uh, now that the dust has settled, and see how it compares to its main competitor in that $250 price class, which is the AMD Radeon RX 6600. So without further ado, let's begin. This is the Intel Arc A750 Limited Edition, and it is a very good-looking card. Custom cards in this price class usually feel a lot lighter and a bit more plastic fantastic, but this one is built quite well and I really like its neutral design that will match well with most other hardware. It is only about 27 centimeters long, two slots thick, and it is barely wider than the PCIe slot, so it will be compatible with most cases out there. To power it up, you need an 8-pin and a 6-pin connection, though I personally would have preferred two 8-pin connectors because the cables would look a bit nicer. With most power supplies, you will have the extra 2-pin connections sticking out. In their marketing, Intel was focusing their comparisons on the RTX 3060 from NVIDIA, but a 3060 is a lot more expensive, and I personally think that NVIDIA cards kind of get interesting from a 3060 Ti and up. So I've put this arc up against a much more likely competitor, which is the AMD Radeon RX 6600. I have the Gigabyte Eagle version here, which should be among the cheaper options. Uh, in the US, you can buy an RX 6600 for about $250, and in the EU, you usually have a few options around or just under 300 euros. So in terms of price, these two cards are direct competitors. Since my usual 3900K bench was busy with testing direct storage, I've tested these cards with a Ryzen 7600X system instead. Uh, all the data is fresh and I was using the latest GPU drivers. If you want to know the exact details of the test bench and all the test conditions, uh, do check the description of this video. So let's see some numbers starting with the 1080p resolution. In Cyberpunk 2077, ARC is off to a great start. It is a bit faster in both average FPS and 1% lows, which are represented with a darker color in the graphs. The 8750 stays nicely above 60 FPS, while the RX 6600 dips below every once in a while. Spider-Man Remastered is a game that really benefits from a higher frame rate, and here the ARC is on average about 17% faster than the 6600. In my ARC build video from a while ago, I mentioned that the Dying Light 2 had some graphic bugs uh, with the Intel card, but those have been fixed with the latest driver as well. So performance-wise, it is more than 25% ahead of the RX 6600, and it is comfortably above 60 FPS, while the 6600 struggles in this game. In Rainbow Six Siege, the ARC is also looking strong, but it is a lot closer here to the AMD, and I would say both cards are perfectly capable of playing this game at high frame rates. In Doom Eternal, Intel was showing better average FPS, but worse 1% lows, though here as well, both cards managed to play this game smoothly. In Anno 1800, Intel and AMD are pretty much tied, but not every game has the ARC competing that well. So in Troy Total War, the RX 6600 is ahead by a few frames, which calculates to about 6%. In Far Cry 6, the gap is about 11% in favor of AMD, but Intel does run the game well. In God of War, Intel again manages to make the game nicely playable, but the AMD card is about 15% ahead, and in Watch Dogs Legion, AMD also leads by about 15%. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is one game where AMD has consistently done very well when compared to Nvidia, and it is pretty much the same when it comes to Intel. AMD is about 28% faster on average, and Intel's 1% lows drop just below 60 FPS. And finally, CSGO. Uh, it is one game Intel has struggled with in the past, but it has made some really good progress with the latest driver updates. Uh, AMD is still ahead, but Intel's gotten to the point where the game actually works well. 
So there is a pretty big variance per game uh, because some games run way better on Intel and some games run better on AMD. But with these 12 games that I've tested, the RX 6600 is ahead by an average of 3%. But keep in mind that could be different if you test a different set of games. So I would say your game preference can really determine which card makes more sense to you. And I cannot really say what type of a game favors Intel or AMD. Both take a clear win in some competitive esports titles, for example, and both have clear wins in big AAA single player games as well. So if you mostly play one game, do check which card does better there. But what matters most is that if you do go for an Intel GPU, you should generally get a pretty good experience. Fast games uh, work well on high refresh rate monitors. Uh, plenty of games run in the 100 to 120 FPS range, and even the heaviest games manage to stay well above 60 FPS for that smooth experience. And this is all with high graphics settings. When it comes to Quad HD gaming, um, well, I personally think that for serious 1440p gaming, you should consider uh, spending a bit more on your GPU. But between these cards, Intel manages to do a bit better than Radeon here. Uh, there are only a handful of games where AMD manages to outperform Intel. And in the games that get really hard to run, like Cyberpunk 2077 and Dying Light 2, for example, the RX 6600 struggles a bit more. On 1440p, Intel leads in eight games, including three games where the gap is about 30% or more, and AMD's only significant win is in CSGO. Since ARC can use uh, both Intel's own uh, XESS upscaling as well as AMD's FSR upscaling, with those enabled, we actually get 60 plus FPS on all those games that are hard to run, but luckily do support upscaling. So if you really cannot spend more on your GPU than $250 and you want to play on a 4040p monitor, ARC does seem like a good option. But there are also some other things to consider here. So this is a first generation product and that can be an issue sometimes as they're still kind of finding their sweet spot. So I had issues with Dying Light 2 with the older drivers, but while those are fixed with the newest drivers, Control for example, didn't want to run at all anymore. Now I'm sure that's gonna be fixed as well, but maybe that will cause bugs in some other titles. So you kind of have to accept that sometimes you might run into some issues, especially with games that are not as mainstream as others. So even though AMD's reputation with drivers is far from perfect, it is still the safer choice. Another really important thing to remember is the fact that for Intel Arc to run well, your PC needs to support resizable bar, which is something that older systems will not support. Uh, you need at least an AMD Ryzen 3000 CPU or newer with a 400 or 500 series motherboard. And for Intel, you need to go for the 10th gen or newer. If you're on an older platform than that, and you just want to upgrade your GPU, the RX 6600 is the way to go. But the biggest problem that I see here is the power consumption. The ARC uses more power when gaming, but more importantly, it uses way more power than the Radeon card in idle. And RX 6600 drops to under five watts when not being used, while the Intel consistently uses 35 watts or more. So if you're paying very little for electricity, like uh, 10 cents per kilowatt hour, and you're not using your PC that much, let's say it's turned on and idling for two hours a day and you're gaming for an hour or so, that difference is not going to mean that much. In this case, buying an ARC instead of the Radian would only cost you a little bit over $10 over three years. But depending on your use and power costs in your country, the difference can go up quickly. Even at a pretty reasonable 20 cents per kilowatt hour, if you're someone that games a lot, you're looking at $50 over three years in extra electricity costs. And the idle power draw especially hurts if you're someone who uses their gaming PC for light work during the day. Now for Europeans that are paying 50 cents per kilowatt hour, the difference starts to become a huge problem in my opinion. Now, depending on your use case, so you might spend another 100 or even 200 or more euros just to run the ARC instead of the Radeon card. And with our 90 cents per kilowatt hour that we're paying here in Holland, 
you're basically wasting a GPU upgrade every three to four years. And again, what you're looking at here is only the difference in power costs between running the ARC and the RX 6600, not the total cost. Now, I do expect that Intel will fix this soon enough. Uh, they've made huge improvements to their performance and to their stability, and within a few months, the ARC has become a very competitive product. And then with this price drop, it is also a very good value option too. Uh, just the fact that we actually have some affordable GPU options that offer decent performance is something that we all should be very happy about. But until they do address this uh, idle power draw, it is really only an option if you don't use your PC for hours every day, or if you live in a place that has electricity cheap. Now, before I go, this video is sponsored by Sezonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high-quality power supplies are extremely efficient. They are very quiet uh, due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They offer a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, and you even get the new 12-volt high-power connection you need for the latest RTX cards from NVIDIA. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there, and as a nice little bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the link in the description below. This is all I have for today. Do let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this Arc GPU and if this is the affordable option you would ever consider. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!